I'm Glenn Darcy, Vice President of Product Management for Arturia. Today I'm going to do a little tutorial about using BeatStep Pro with Ableton. Now we're going to show how to do Mackie Control using the, the knobs in the Mackie Control Huey modes. One of the first things that you'll want to do is you'll want to open up the MIDI Control Center. And in the MIDI Control Center, down here on this uh, far right hand side, you'll see there's a whole lot of different parameters. The ones that we want are right here. They're called Mackie Control Huey. First thing you should do is click on Sync. Then you should come over here, look up Mackie Control Huey, and make sure that it's set for Mackie Control Universal. Uh, if it isn't, if it's on Huey, then click and choose Mackie Control. That will send that uh, message over to your beat step and it will be set up that way. We'll go into Live and I'm going to go into the Preferences here and we'll go into the MIDI Sync. So, first off, you'll see that the Beat Step Pro shows up as two devices. You'll see uh, Arturia Beat Step Pro and, and a second uh, Beat Step Pro here. Um, using the Control Mode, we'll go into the Control Mode here, the knobs can do two functions. They can just send regular MIDI CC controllers, ones that you assign, um, and then you can route those to whatever thing you want using uh, the MIDI Learn within uh, Ableton Live here. So if I wanted to you know, map a, uh, let's map this in to this knob here, I just turn it and it adds that, that knob to it. Um, we're going to undo that though because I have some other MIDI routings. So we'll go back into the preferences. But one thing that you can do here also is by pressing that button, you've got the Mackie control in Huey mode for the knobs. And it really changes the knobs and these buttons when you're in control mode. It also changes the two arrows here uh, by allowing you to do some bank selections. So how do we set this up so that, uh, that the Mackie control can actually work and what does it do? Well, first off, we'll go pick control surface, and we'll go down the list here, and we'll just go uh, Mackie Control Classic. And for input on this, we're going to choose the second one, the Beat Step Pro Out Editor. So that's the secondary port. And what's going to happen down here is it's going to show that that's your uh, Mackie Classic input. And we're going to use that for sync, and we're going to use that for uh, remote work. So I've got sync and remote uh, enabled on that. I also have the output uh, enabled. Now what that's going to allow us to do is when we're in control mode and these knobs, I can now turn these knobs and you can see it's affecting all of the channel levels. So I've got one through eight going here. This can then affect the pan controls. And so it's automatically mapped to a uh, to all these these parameters within uh, within Ableton makes it uh, nice and fast and easy to use. So we've got our volumes here, we've got our pans here, and this is all great because I can do eight channels. But what if I go wider than that? Well, then I can use this button, press it once, and now you can see channel nine, ten, eleven, and so on is going to be uh, edited here. If I go back, I've shifted back to banks one through eight. Now these buttons here, what they do is they will do mute and solos. So in this case, it's the enable disable uh, track function. So this is a uh, channel one, two, three, four. So this is going to be your your mute for each of these tracks, your odd numbers. You'll see it light up blue on the front panel. You'll see the tracks go off on uh, Ableton. And then the other button here is a solo button. So when I press that you'll see that the solo highlights in Ableton. So that gives you a lot of, of control very instantly, very fast and, uh, and easy. Now when you go to MIDI CC mode, maybe I want to use all these knobs for some other kind of control functions here. Okay, so that's Profit 5, and that's doing my synth bass part. So we're back in control mode, 
If I go into MIDI mapping, you can see I've got a number of devices here mapped already. And uh, we can look at it and see its profit 5, and you can see its cutoff residence, a few different parameters. And as I turn this, you can see I've got my cutoff resonance envelope amount. I have decay time here. I've got my attack, decay, sustain releases over here. So I'll play it here. And that's as simple as going into MIDI map, choosing the parameter that you want to map, and turning a knob. It's really stupidly simple in, uh, in Ableton. They make it really, really nice and, and fun to do. Ableton also allows you to have separate channels and multiple tracks enabled at one time. So it makes a very nice performance kind of tool here. So I can just hit play here. And what's nice then is being able to go back into the QE mode. And changing things up in real time, you know, between going between the Huey mode and the CC mode, Ableton uh, and the BeatStep Pro work really well together on this. They make a great uh, companion for each other. To get deeper with that, you need to look into the uh, into the Ableton manual, um, but this should give you the, the beginning steps to uh, start doing a lot of cool stuff here with Ableton. All right, one of the first things that you're going to want to do in Ableton is you're going to want to set up your transports. And you want the transport buttons on the uh, on the BeatStep Pro to control the transports on Ableton. Now the BeatStep Pro by default will send MIDI machine control as well as MIDI CCs on this. Um, that's the default settings. Ableton is one of the few DAWs that I know that does not receive MIDI machine control. So you have to set up the transports via MIDI controls, MIDI CCs. All right, so to do this, it's pretty simple. You click on the MIDI button up here. You see everything goes purple. And then you can click on the buttons up here, and then you just press the button here. Now, one thing I've got is I'm sending notes and stuff from my sequence, so I'm going to mute out my sequences so that they're not sending anything when I'm doing the mapping. So I click on the Stop button, and then I hit the Stop button. And you see it adds over here the Transport Stop. Then I click over here on Play, and I hit Play. Then we're going to uh, click on record. All right, now we're going to disable all the uh, MIDI. So now I've got my stop button, my play button. You can see it's uh, playing up here. And I've got my record button. So that's how you map your transports. Nice and easy. Okay, so now we've got our Mackie control surface set up. We've got our transports mapped. The next thing we might want to be able to do is go between internal and external sync. So now we're going to go between either using internal sync on the BeatStep Pro or external sync on it. So I like using the BeatStep Pro as your master clock, but there's times where it just doesn't make sense to do that. So using this in Ableton, we'll show you how to do it. If you want Ableton to follow the BeatStep Pro, you'll have your sync settings to internal, and you just hit your sync button until it says INT. And in your preferences under MIDI sync, on the input here, on the BeatStep Pro, you'll click on for the sync. Now, we've got that set up. Now, if I want to, at other times, have live control the timing on this, like I want to control Ableton from a different control surface and I want this to follow along, I want Ableton to send sync. To send sync, we'll click on this output here, sync right there. So you've got sync on the input and on the output, and that's going to allow it to be in either mode. If I want Ableton to follow sync 
I'm going to have to click on this little EXT button up here. Now, I'm sending sync here. This is receiving. We've got the transports mapped. I'm going to go on and set this tempo to, uh, let's do something, like 144. And we can see the tempo up here in Ableton right now is set to 100 BPM. So we just hit play. And you see everything in Ableton goes gray at that point. And if you look at the clocks, you can see that it's in time with the uh, kick drum there. So now I want to go to internal sync. I just turn that off. On my Beat Step Pro, I press the sync button. I set it to USB. So now if I want to sync Beat Step Pro to live, I would just uh, turn off external and then control my transports, control Ableton from itself or from a different external source. And the Beat Step Pro would end up following that. Be sure to visit Arturia.com Go under the BeatStep Pro product and check out the Resources tab. In the Resources tab, you're going to find more tutorials, tips, tricks, and other uh, extra files that will help you in using your BeatStep Pro.